Hey, what's up, folks? Thank you for joining us for part two of our dive into the history of festivals. That's right. I said part two. So if you've not listened to part one, I would stop this right now and go back and listen to part one so you don't miss anything. Don't you do it. Don't do it. Stop now. Stop. All right, friends. So uh, we covered a lot in the first part of our dive into the history of uh, musical festivals and everything. I thought that was a very fun and interesting conversation. We also had some real talks about some real tragedies that took place and we uh, are going to finish things off in a part two. Hopefully I don't think this is going to end up a part three. I think we can, we can kind of consolidate everything we have left into this second yeah. part. Um, uh, before we get into it, do you have any thoughts about the conversation? Uh, how'd you feel about what we talked about? Like, do, you know, do you, did you feel good about it? Like you feel like this was as interesting as we thought it was going to be when we, no, it definitely it? is. I just, I'm still amazed about the origin of, you know, con of the festivals. And like I said, from before yes. the beginning, like how it all started and it doesn't make me want to go to a, fe a festival. Like I'm not, I still <laughs> yeah. don't want to. It didn't, it didn't make yeah. you excited for festivals. <laughs> I was like, man, I, like people died and yeah, got crushed. Like, and I'm like, good, man. They're dirty. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'll, I'll stay. Like if there was, a festival to go to. Where it's a young man's game. It's where, a young I mean, game. like an organized where it's like there's a capacity limit. I, I'm all for it. For sure. Where for there's sure. safe distances and shit like that and food is being provided and AC and the little fans that have a little miss. AC. The little, oh, you well, you know what I mean? The fans that have a little miss spraying out and tents yeah, and shit sure. like that. Yeah, for sure. Like they hand those out. Um, yeah, I got like stations, yes, like rehydration stations. I'm all for it. You know, I'm I all for you. it. As long as it's not 110 degrees outside, I'm down. But also... Whoever's there, it depends on who's there. It, de it depends, it depends, on, the lineup, it depends on the lineup. Well, here's the thing, which we're going to get into in this part, in the second part, is when I was going to festivals, a lot of that stuff that you're describing was taking place. Okay. But what happened was, as this, this has been happening since the year 2000, but it's, it's gotten worse over the last 10 years. Music has become so devalued. Like the value of a stream. These mu uh, uh, to be a musician in 2023 is like, you're being fucked by the industry. You make no money on your music. The real, the only real way you make money is doing is doing tours. But here's the rub. Here's the rub, though, friend. You could be a uh, little gloopy gloop and go to Rolling Loud and perform for 150 thousand people. And when you do a concert in the next town the next night, you can't sell 2,000 seats because the kids are there for the festival, and they'll come hear your song that's popular on TikTok, but they don't give a shit about you. So you have to do the festival circuit because it's the only way to gather enough crowd to get a, a get a check and not have to show you don't have to show and prove. Well, you don't have to show proof of concept. Like you don't have to say I little gloopy gloop can sell 100,000 tickets. You go 100,000 people came to see me rolling loud, so just give me whatever you think I should get paid. But you can't take that concept and go do it at a Wells Fargo Arena. Well, so I've seen videos where Artists where they they don't have a they're not a big name on the lineup, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they just maybe they're maybe they came because word of mouth from somebody else like J Cole or a song like or a, one song one song off. or maybe they live they maybe they live in the town where they like let's get a couple artists as locally that we want to that we join the show. But I've seen clips and videos of where the crowd disperses because J Cole or ASAP Rocky or Drake is not up. They just went they, on. Oh, they're not up. Oh, they oh, haven't oh, came up gotcha. yet. Like it was like right. say um Tyler Creators on and it's like Lil Gloopy Gloop is next. It's like all right, I yeah. don't want to And then after Lil Gloopy Gloop, like, <laughs> after Lil Gloopy Gloop is Drake. It's Drake. And people go, let's go get some sandwiches. And we'll, and we'll come back. But and I mean like they I'm guessing they still get paid regardless of somebody's yes. watching the show because it's a festival. It doesn't matter if, if the, the attendance sales tickets matter. Mm -hmm. Like and you can get your footage and put it on your Instagram and go rock the crowd. But if you were really there, you go, Oh, we were all we leaving were all and leaving. booing. Yeah, like, we went yeah. to use the bathroom. But you can make it look good, and now you get another spot. When 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 uh when Rolling Loud goes to New York, they go, well, little Gloopy Gloop was after Tyler the Creator, and we saw his Instagram, and the people looked like they loved it, so we'll pay him ten thousand again. Mm. But you can't get ten thousand because you can't sell out the the place where we saw Swayze in, in Pittsburgh, yeah, which was a bowling alley, yeah, which was wild. Oh, sorry, a skating a skating a skating ring. I think it was a skating ring, and know. and that's no knock against Swayze, but again, this is a guy that we thought was like, if you ask me and. 2008 or nine, whenever we went to go see Swayze, who's the like coolest dude in the world? I've been like, Swayze, like this guy can't, he can't go anywhere and not pack out a place. And he couldn't sell out a bowl. Nobody knew who he Now, was. there was other, I'm, we, that was a sketchy little, he came for some drinks and somebody promised him a bag of weed or something. That was something sketchy. But my point is, there are artists who you will see 
performing on the same stage as some of the biggest artists in the world at these festivals, and they can't sell out a bowling alley in the town next door yeah. with their with just their name. Hey, you think he remembers that that night? What if I met? What if I messaged him? You think he will remember that night? No, fuck no. no. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I was in Pittsburgh. No, I, man, I was high out of my mind, brother. He's <laughs> that guy. No, no, I don't think he remembers that. <laughs> he forgot that immediately. I don't even know if he remembers getting off the bus. Like, <laughs> they were going somewhere a lot better, and then just were like. A thousand dollars and some smearing off vodka. I yeah, really okay, wish, but I, I really wish that he was like he spotted two black men trying to bust a move and and was like, "Hey, y'all trying to help on the bus?" I mean, I, I we let's get you guys out of this was, crazy town. We, you was already well, you was already in deep shit. It really didn't matter. It trouble. really didn't matter if we would have. I would have never gone home <laughs> if if he, if the offer would have came. I would have just become a Swayze roadie for the rest of my life. It really was. I was like, I don't want to go home. <laughs> I don't know what's in store for me when I get home. I just told my mom I'm at my friend's house down the street and I'm in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Pittsburgh. Five hours away. In a raggedy car that might not make it back home. I didn't tell you that. But I hadn't changed the oil, friend. In years since I had the car. I had the car years. I didn't oh, change the oil. But I knew the car was like shitty. You knew. So you signed I mean, up to yeah. it. You knew what it hey, was man, when you signed hey, up. Hey, man. I'm ride or die, man. I'm ride or die, man. You know, if I if you win it, we both in it. And it's, it yeah. is what it is. If we, sure. we would have broke down on, on the way to Philly, then I don't know how we would have got back home. But it would have been if I'd, an if I'd had to story. call my mom to come and get us, this podcast would have never <laughs> had. I would be a, a six feet in the dirt if she had to come to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to pick us up. Oh man, this con, this this podcast would never have happened. <laughs> but yes, friend, you are right. That's why I wish that we could go back in the time machine because you would have been a great festival partner. You could have been a yellow boot boy, man. Yeah, man, could have been, man. You, you could have been a yellow boot boy. You could have been having a great time, man. Just ride it, ride it, die, bro. Come out to <laughs> Delaware. We in the middle of Delaware. It's hot. You could have been out there. But anyway. Let's get into it. So dive back into part two. So popular outdoor festivals like Lollapalooza and Coachella were both planned and started in the 90s and took a while to find their footing and identity before becoming the household names that they are today. So uh, Coachella's first Coachella was in 1999. And it took years for it to become Coachella and, you know, everything that it is. So um, the first Coachella had 10,000 people gathered to see Beck, Jurassic Five and Rage Against the Machine. I know two of those people, and they're both like Grammy Award winning artists and whatever. So that's a great lineup. The now legendary festival has seen crowds over 100,000 and has featured some mm. of the biggest moments in pop culture from Daft Punk's revolutionary LED lit pyramid to Tupac's resurrection via hologram. So Coachella, not this, not this decade, but last decade was part of some of the biggest moments in music. Like when, when we, talk, we talked about it on this podcast before, but when that video of Tupac coming out on that stage, and saying what's up, Coachella, yeah. and walking around, and, and 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 Snoop Dogg was there. It was my to me, man. It was like I had friend I had never seen. I I thought that that was the peak of technology. I thought we had reached the the precipice as a society. I was like, it can't get any more. This is the Jetsons. They just took <laughs> this man. He's talking to us. He's out here. He looks real. Wow. He has chains on. His shirt is off, and he's walking around the stage. Yeah. Him and Snoop Dogg did a, they both did the Crip Walk at some point yeah, in unison. Crazy. I was like, this is, I was like, this is the most amazing thing ever. Now, Coachella has since become a commercial watered down bullshit festival that people just go to take pictures at. But at a point, it was like a very revolutionary sh- uh, festival that was doing a lot of like cutting edge things. Mm-hmm. And now not so much. Now it's really like a cash grab sponsored by a bunch of companies and you know, mm. uh, liquid death and all these, it's just, it's just a cash grab. Like it's just get, get as many people to come here, get as many influencers to post about it as possible. So we sell more tickets and give you the same show that you could get at Lollapalooza at Firefly, all of these festivals, these big festivals, like the, the top five big festivals, they all have the same headliner these days. Mm. Like there's no unique, like n- none of them have their own identity. It's not like one of the top five festivals is a folk festival or a whatever. They're all pop festivals. They all have Post Malone or, or Trippy Red or Dua Lipa or whoever. Like, they all have the same five rotating headliners. So the top five biggest festivals are all owned by the same company and basically do this. Yeah, like, they're all owned by Live Nation like or another company. Volkswagen and shit. Just, they just own exactly. all the same. They thing. own all the cars. Yeah. The, the, one company bought up, like, every festival wow. within the last 10 years. Because they see how lucrative it is, and now they just shell out a watered down, shitty experience that you could get at any festival or any concert. There's nothing unique about it. The soul has been stripped from it, which I'll get into in more in more detail. But it's really sad because like festivals were this really cool uh, experience to for, to for people to meet and have fun and you know express themselves, and now they just become sponsored by Bud Light, uh, Post Malone concerts. And no, I like Post Malone, but I'm just saying it's the top ten charts. 
festival. Ariana Grande, The Weeknd, Post Malone. Like these are the, the big festivals. These festivals that come into these cities and are 400,000 people or whatever, they're all, they all have the same five people performing. There's, they're not breaking artists. It's not, you know, even like... Um, I mean, can you blame them, though? Why change Why change? What ain't, why, why fix what's not broken? If they if 150,000 people show up every year and buy uh, uh, 6 million cans of Bud Light, and why would I, yeah, I, why would I, just, why would I, I change it? bring the same people. <laughs> it's it's on the customers. It's like being a Browns fan. Yeah. yeah. Every year, they're going to not make the playoffs. They're going to suck. It's on the Browns fans to not sell out every game, but guess what? They sell out every game. So why would the Browns owner be like, what am I going to spend money to get good? You guys sell out the... The name of the game here is me. I own a stadium. And a team. You guys buy jerseys. Yes. You buy tickets. I make money regardless. You buy hot dogs. If we don't win, I make money still. I'm in the black every year. You guys, I make money. I'm a profitable <laughs> business. Why would I spend money when you guys pay me? I make money every yeah. year. Why would I spend money? Exactly. The, the onus is on the consumer, which I'll get into as well about festival. We want festival culture to change. It's on us. It's not on these companies that are just taking advantage of us. That's all they're doing is being like, oh, you guys will come out here and listen to Lil Baby do a mediocre performance and buy Bud Light and buy T-shirts and take pictures just to say, hey, I was at Coachella, and you'll do it every year. Why would we change it? Every year I spend a dollar, I make $5. Why would I change the business up? Over the last 20 years, as the value of music has steeply declined with the revolution of digital streaming, the value of live music appears to be at its peak. Festival spots and live shows have become one of the last real revenue streams for an artist to make money on their music. You know, other than like there's a big artists, they do like bundles. If you buy their, if you buy their album, you get like a shirt and a, a poster yeah. and a ticket to their concert. Yeah, rest, but that's the piece Nipsey Hussle. Cause I know that's, that's the only person I know who did that. And I thought that was a phenomenal. Well, now idea. every, he did it and he did it on his own. But now like uh, Nicki Minaj does that. Drake does that. Big artists can do that because they have a machine behind them that can help them with the marketing and label design and everything like that. But a small artist can't offer you, I made this music, man. I got 16 songs I'm trying to eat off of. Would you like to buy these? It's like, well, can I get a, a headband or a shirt? It's like, man, what the fuck? Yeah. I saw something that was like a million streams. You get like a $100. That's it? Something crazy. It, bro. It's insane. Why? Well, it's is insane. It, is it so, the it's so it's so it's it's so accessible now that it's just is that why they it's don't worthless. make enough money? Money's worth. I mean, music music is worthless, and there's so many like Spotify gets a cut. This person gets a cut. By the time like Taylor, Swift, well, not a bad example, but like I don't know, an independent artist or or a lower level artist. By the time they get it gets to them, it's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a penny. Okay, so I did see that. Uh, I do want to read this. It says music change. Music itself has changed as well as making festivals and bigger attractions for listeners. As streaming becomes one of the most popular ways to listen to music, sales, mm -hmm. sales of tickets and merchandise make up the bulk of the fans um, and on, on the music. So yes. it's like you, if they have no choice but to tour and to go to these festivals if they get paid six figures or whatever they get paid because yes. they're not making any money on, on the, the music. music. So, it's, yeah, music is incredibly, like, it's worthless, honestly. That's why you're like, people are like, Rihanna. When are we getting an album? What? I'm a billionaire. I make a billion dollars <laughs> from makeup. I make a billion dollars from billion. lingerie. And you want me to go out there? And listen, no disrespect. I love, I love Beyonce. But you want me to go out there and do what Beyonce's doing? And I'm sitting at home on my ass making mil hundreds of millions of dollars doing nothing? And Beyonce's out there. I do what? And show up. I'm good. And it's a great concert yeah. and everything. But, like, why would I, why would I be in a rush to go yeah. do that? Why would I, why would I want to compete? Especially with the Beehive. I don't think you... No, nah, I'm good. I'm home sitting yeah. at home. I don't, I'm not gonna try to put on a. Uh, you saw what Rihanna did at that at that Super Bowl. That's all she's got in there with that kind of money. That's all she's got in there is a little wine, with of her hips yeah. standing in place, and that's all I got for you. I'm worth a billion dollars. You expect me to sweat? Yeah. You expect that's the thing. Think about how disrespectful it is. You would never ask Mark Cuban like I know. Hey, Mark Cuban, I know you worth about six billion. Can you get up here and dance for me until you sweat? Me, a, a, a garbage man, no disrespect to garbage man, but y'all ain't making what Mark Cuban is making. You expect me to come out there and entertain you till I sweat? You can kiss my I'm ass. Good. I'm good. I don't home. need your money. I'm good. I'm fine. <laughs> like, I'm okay. I don't need to give y'all slaps. All these things people keep tweeting to Rihanna. I don't have slaps for you. I only have slaps for the bank. <laughs> the slaps are coming in tremendously, too. Like, they never stop coming in. I'm not doing nothing but sleeping yeah. here. So the commercialization of music festivals has led to a handful of corporations controlling every major festival in the country between having to pay artists enough to secure their performances, uh, needing to sell a certain amount of a certain number of tickets in order to be successful. The additional cost of, of insurance and the risk of bad weather. These corporations are constantly looking for ways to streamline in quotes 
festival experiences to maximize profits. And I talked about that in um, the first part, and I, we've been talking about it a little bit here as well. Um, I read an article about how there's like two or three major co- companies, Live Nation being one, who have bought up stake in every major festival that is in the United States and, and, and around the world as well. And you as a company, what are you going to do in order to maximize your profits? You're going to cut down on uh, water stations, cut down on security costs, cut down on food. You're not going to get the good, good food. No. You can get the bare minimum of food. Every, everything's bare minimum so we can make the most money. And, the, and guess what? And the ticket price does not change at all. And in fact, the ticket price, is, it goes up. So you're paying more money for a worse experience. That's what, that's what mainstream festivals have become. Now, there are obviously, you can do a smaller, there are still festivals that are 3,000 people, 2,000 people, and are curated for people to have a good time. But that's the thing. Those don't make any money. There's like five festivals making real money yeah. because they are the mainstream ones that everybody wants to go to. Because Post Malone's not going to go do the festival with 2,000 people. The weekend's not going to go do the festival with 2,000 people. The weekend's going to go do the festival with 60,000 right. people. And the festival with 60,000 people is owned by a corporation who probably knows the label that the, the weekend is signed to and can call his people yeah. directly and ask him to come to the concert, come to and the it festival. Gotta be, it got to so, be worth it, too. The, the money. Exactly. So it's the, so basically festivals have been Walmarted and mom and pop festivals are falling to the wayside and it's up to the people to go, I don't want to go to some cookie da- cookie cutter, b- bullshit, watered down experience, pay $600 for a ticket and get a VIP ticket and I get a water bottle that says fucking the Shigubi Fest on it. I don't want to pay for that. I want to go to a festival that cares about me having a good time, is breaking great artists and showing me, you know, new experiences, trying new technologies out and give me a new festival experience. But guess what? That's hard to do because they don't make any money because they're being muscled out by these big corporation festivals. And it's funny you say that because I have something here that says people are more likely now to spend money on experiences over material goods. Yes. Uh, uh, Somebody that was studying said that sharing a clip of you at a concert or a festival with Billie Eilish or Cardi B performing is better or more gratifying than you buying, than somebody buying, you know, a fucking Versace or fucking Fendi yeah. type shirt. So yes, people exactly. would rather spend a whole bunch of money to be at, uh, what is it called? Coachella. It's just, it's the st- and mm-hmm. like, oh, uh, uh, you know, fucking J. Cole's up on the, on the stage and they get more out of that than anything else. It's like. That's way more of a status symbol than a, like a Louis Vuitton right, today. Right, exactly. But it's like, but I guess it all depends on who you're talking to and the lineup of like a more local type of festival but i mean like mm-hmm. if they're giving out water but if they're catering catering to the 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 people that's coming to the to the uh the, the concert or whatever or the festival did you actually have fun like you can you can put come the on, video man. up of j cole and all your friends from high school can comment on it you can get all those endorphins and people being like damn man you saw j cole at the such a not a few 200 feet away but you had a terrible you had a terrible time. <laughs> you pay, you'll never say it, obviously. Right. You, while you were filming that video, there's somebody talking. Yeah. Like, you didn't even really hear J. Cole. Somebody got bad hygiene you know. or some shit like that. Yeah, Sweaty. you know, it's, it's, it's too many people. You're too far from the stage. But you took that video and you posted it. Everybody loved it. And you had a terrible time. But the endorphins that you get from people being jealous yep. of you is, is more powerful to you than going to a festival where you saw a great performance from a guy that people don't know. And when you post the video, they don't really care as much. But you loved his performance. You had great food. All the food trucks were like curated and perfect food trucks. You had plenty of space to walk around. They had great merchandise, like unique, one-of-a-kind merchandise. They had an a, a electric garden. Like they had some shit, a cool Ferris wheel. Like they had some cool shit on the grounds that you could do other than music. Like it was a full circle experience that you paid $400 for. And you felt like it wasn't just me surrounded by thousands of people shoulder to shoulder hearing music kind of because I'm so far back. The speakers aren't even really picking it up. I got to do things other than go to the concerts. Like I remember when I was going to Firefly, um, I don't, they probably still do this, but they used to have like silent discos. Okay. So in between, you know how, you know, instead of going to go see little goopy goop, we could go take some, uh, go, go, go take some headphones. There'll be 400 people in a, in a, a crowd at a DJ. And it's like, if you hit the green side or the red side, it's two different DJs playing. Okay. Now silent discos have become more popular, obviously, but this was like 2013. Hmm. So, but again, it's just showing you like, you can do different. It is. They're trying to make it a cool experience by offering you different stuff. And now those things, now the corporations have bought into the festivals, they're stripping away those things and still charging you the same price or more for the ticket. Yeah. So you get less experience for the same amount of money or more money. 
And my whole thing is, yes, you posted a video of you at the Billie Eilish Fest or at the festival when Billie Eilish came out, but you had a terrible time. So when you had Firefly, now, is it is it live music or is it just the music? Is it a DJ playing the music from the, the actual record and the person? No, it's live, it's music. live music. I'm saying, okay. oh, it's, yeah, it's live, live music. It's the actual artist the li- there. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, like, is the, I'm talking about, like, the people that, the band. Is there a live band there? Oh, well, it depends. I mean, like, I saw Fetty Wap. He was terrible. He was late and he just played to his tracks. But, yeah, if you go see a band, the band, yeah, the band there plays. But also some rappers, like, um, I saw, remember Chitty Bang? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Chitty Bang had a live band with them. Okay. So they were rapping, but they had like a drummer and, and it, so it was cool. It was like some go go. That's shit. what I that's, that's what I would want to experience going to it's instrumentation. That's yeah, what I want. That's what I want to hear. Cut and to I gotta give I gotta give my shout outs to Usher because that dude, I've seen his a whole I've yes. seen videos of his performance and he, a band. And he that dude perform it's not he's not just a he performs, he puts on for the crowd. Yes. If that's what I'm if that's where I'm going, I want to see that. That's yes. what I want to see. And that's the thing. And that's the thing. Because festivals have become so stripped down and commercialized, even the artists are coming in and just kind of phoning it in. It's like, I'm getting 50 racks. I'm going to rap over the, the song I don't want that. while I rap. I, that bothers me. That I don't yeah. want to. That's not what I came but to. But that's, that's on what... you as a, that's on the consumer to go. I want to, I want to, I want, I want a festival full of artists who give a shit, want to put on a show and want to earn their money. Because if you, again, imagine you get yourself to a position as an artist where you're like, Oh, they just want to see me. Yeah. I remember, I can't remember what, what uh, I think it was Pat Oswalt. Pat Oswalt said he got paid a ridiculous amount of money to do a, 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 a stand-up comedy uh, set at an Indian reservation, right? And he said, he came out, you know, he practiced, he's like working on his material and everything. He came out and everybody, the amount of money he got paid, it was a corporate event. Everybody was drunk. He came out and they all just yelled his credits at him. Ratatouille! <laughs> the King of Queens! He was like, bro, and you get to a certain point, they'll pay you more money to do less work. And why would I say no yeah, to that? That's true. It's like you, if you tell Future, hey, Future, we're going to give you $100,000. You're going to go out to the um, to uh, New York City for a festival of 100,000 people and just basically just tell your DJ to play your music and stand out there. We're giving you the $100,000. It, it's not based on your performance at all. It's like, why would I do anything other than come out there, sweat as least as less as possible, collect my check and bounce? It's on the people to not show up to that and go when they go. Future was terrible. Let's stop going to future concerts. Like that was awful. But that has that and has to be a certain. There has to be a, f- a handful of artists that go like that care about the craft to where it's like I want to put on. I see footage of Drake. Drake looks like he's putting on a show, bro. He's got fucking people like stuff floating around yeah. the audience and shit. Drake's a big artist. He has a lot of hits. He could come out there and just play music, but he doesn't. It looks like he's that's what I mean. That's, doing a, like he's trying. I mean. Like you care. He gives you a care shit about people who help you get where you are. I mean, you got people, yes. you got people that the consumers have to pay, that pay to buy your music. At some point you got to make, to make money. So I mean like, exactly. without them, you wouldn't be who you are. And I feel like the fest, the essence of a festival has lost that. They're just like, you are all sheep. Come in here. We're going to throw some hay on the ground. Eat the, eat the, eat the, eat the hay <laughs> and give us a hundred dollars. That's it. I don't give a shit. If you have a good time, you're, we just want your money. You can't, you can't, yes. blame them. you can't blame them. Cause Hey man, the money keeps coming in. So ultimately a festival success comes down to the lineup. A lucrative trend for major artists over the last decade has been headlining their own festivals with lineups consisting of friends of the headliner or artists that that said headliner has a financial interest in promoting to their audience. So uh, for example, like J Cole has Dreamville and it's all artists from his label on a festival that he's the headliner. So he's going to bring in his J Cole super group of fans but they're going to stay and watch Jid and um, who's my girl, Ari Lennox. And they're going to watch. So he, he brings them in based on his name. But then, like we said, they're not. But none of the people on Dreamville are little goopy glue. Yeah. They're going to put on a show, too. So they're going to put on a show for 20, 30,000 people. But J. Cole is using his name to get 20,000 people to show up. And then, you know, putting on his artists yeah. as well. I think that's different, too, because I think that's cool. And I think it's, it's unique because... Those artists that's not J. Cole, that's uh-huh. they you have to. You have to come out and perform. Yeah, because if for you sure. want this is the biggest this is the biggest opportunity exactly, of your life. Exactly. If, and you want their if audience. If you want your career to go, you have you, to come out and perform and put on a good show. And and if you want that audience to go, I'm gonna go listen to Jid's album or Ari Lennox's album, then you all all you can get is an opportunity. If somebody puts you in front of thirty thousand people and you don't perform, 
That's your fault. But if you go out there and you perform, guess what? You just might have got 10,000 new fans, 20,000 new fans. That's, it's up to you to perform. So some other examples of artists doing their own festivals include Tyler, the creator. He has this uh, thing called Camp Flog. Now he's been doing that for a few years. It's been very successful. Um, he had Drake come out one year. That famously, Drake got booed because they thought Frank Ocean was coming out. Shit. Which is crazy. They booed Drake and he cut his set short because they thought Frank... That's how crazy Frank Ocean yeah, fans he, are. They thought Frank Ocean... Fran, he wasn't coming out. He was never on the bill. He was never the headliner. But what Tyler, the creator, did was he went, it's me, this person, that person, and a secret, secret headliner. Oh, they thought he was Frank Ocean. And they thought it was Frank Ocean. So they wow. waited there and Drake... And Drake comes out, and they love Frank Ocean so much, they now know Frank Ocean is not here. Drake even goes on the microphone like, hey, y'all, listen, um, I got some music for y'all. Frank Ocean is not here, but I would love to stay here and entertain you guys. If you, Where's Frank? Boo! He was like, all right, well, I'm not going to stay out here and get booed. I'm Drake. Yeah. Like, you're not going to boo me. He left. You got to take what you can get sometimes. They, they were so mad yeah. that they, did, they, they, wow. they, they chose not to be entertained. They'd rather sit there in silence than not hear Frank Ocean. So, uh, yeah, so uh, Tyler, the creator, has Camp Flognaw. Jay-Z has the Made in America Festival, which is very popular. Um, Drake has OVO Fest. And Travis Scott had Astroworld. Affirmative Murder is brought to you by HelloFresh. Take a bite out of summer with HelloFresh. From chef-crafted seasonal ingredients to their new fresh and fit summer menu, HelloFresh brings flavor right to your door. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your front doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. And HelloFresh gets that you want options when it comes to making food for dinner, not just the same old thing. That's why they offer up to 40 recipes to choose from every single week, so you'll never get bored and can always find something new to try and love. And obviously in the summer months, you're doing a lot of trips and traveling, so when you get home, it's nice to have a box of HelloFresh waiting for you, and you've got dinner ready in less than 30 minutes. It's a really good option for me when I don't feel like going to the grocery store. And uh, it's always fun to cook. Put some music on, just lose track of time. Just go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 Hysteria and use the code 50 Hysteria for 50% off plus free shipping. That's the number 50, 50, H-Y-S-T-E-R-I-A. Use that code and get 50% off your order plus free shipping. Once again, that's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Affirmative Murder is brought to you by Rosetta Stone. Are you looking to get a leg up at your job at Ikea by learning to speak Finnish or whatever floopy doop language they speak so you can sell more furniture? Or maybe you're trying to figure out what cute and infectious and adorable things BTS are saying on all their red carpet interviews. Well, then I think Rosetta Stone is for you. Rosetta Stone is the most trusted language learning program, hands down. Rosetta Stone teaches you through immersion. So instead of memorizing and drilling vocabulary words into your brain, you learn by matching audio from native speakers, from visuals to reading stories, participating in dialogues, and other practical language skills which help you fast track your ability to communicate fluently. Rosetta Stone offers 25 languages from Spanish to French, Italian, German to Chinese, Korean and Japanese, and even Dutch, Arabic and Polish. And right now they're offering a lifetime membership. You can buy the program now and get it forever. That's right, you will forever have access to all the lessons for all the languages and literally never pay a renewal fee. The focus of this program is preparing you for real, authentic conversations, not just knowing a couple of phrases. So if you find yourself, I don't know, in Switzerland on top of a mountain at a random bar, and you want to convey to them that I'm hungry, but I don't want to eat any of the animals that I've seen on my trek up this mountain, do you have any vegetarian options? You will be able to do that without causing a scene or disrespecting your waiter, and potentially having Swiss spit in your beer. So don't put off learning that language any longer. There's no better time than right now to get started. And for a limited time, Affirmative Murder listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 40% off. That's $179 for unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Just go to rosettastone.com slash today and start learning a new language today. Auf Wiedersehen. So in 2021, Travis Scott's third annual Astro World Festival Named after his wildly popular Astro World album, which is great album. a masterpiece. Great album. I mean, fantastic album. It, it, I have nothing but good things to say about that album. It's an absolutely amazing album. Um, but his he he put out a he did a festival based around that album, which was like circus based and a lot of carnival imagery. Yeah, because it, it, it used to be it used to be a carnival. It used to be an amusement. Park. It was a, yes, you like walk yeah. into his mouth. Yeah. It was like a big top circus type of thing. Um, 
So his al- that album, Astroworld, was released in 2018, and the Astroworld, which was in 2021, saw 50,000 attendees invade Scott's hometown of Houston mm-hmm. to see a star-studded lineup of performances with La Flame being the main La attraction. Flame. So, so uh, he was, again, it was much like J. Cole, except his was not art. He doesn't have artists, but it was, I mean, big. It, was, it would be like Travis Scott, Summer Walker, uh, Lil Baby, uh, Drake, you know, and so it was a big, it was a festival, but he was the headliner. So he got his audience to come out, but then it was a star studded sure. event, the, the Astro World festivals. Yeah. So it's also important to contextualize that Travis Scott has a reputation rightfully earned as a concert rager. Travis Scott shows are no, notoriously high energy and chaotic, and he wants them to be that way. He encourages people to crowd surf and jump off things. And that's kind of his thing. Go crazy. Uh, in August 2015, Scott was arrested on charges of inciting a crowd to jump barriers at the Lollapalooza Festival in Chicago. Wow. He, play, he pled guilty to disorderly conduct and paid a fine, according to officials. The, the, the amount of that fine wasn't you know, made public. But I think that he was then banned from Lollapalooza. Hmm. And I think a lot of it was probably the impetus of him deciding to start his own festival. He wasn't banned from like, Travis Scott was a, 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 a big deal. Like it wasn't like he w- it was hard for him to get concert time, but I'm sure him being able to do whatever he wanted to do was a big reason that he started Astroworld. Yeah. So in two, and on October 26th of 2021, Scott announced the lineup for the 2021 Astroworld Festival, which included performances by Young Thug, mm. SZA, mm. Lil Baby, mm. Earth, Wind & Fire, Ooh. Master P, Ooh. and 21 Savage. 21, 21. Uh, the festival took place on November 5th, 2021. Concert goers began to line up in the early hours of the morning, and by 4 p.m., 54 patients had been treated by the medical staff on site, and the Houston Police Department had noted dangerous crowd conditions. This is at 4 p.m. The, the festival is like, just started. It's the first day. I, I mean, before we get into the, before we kind of deep dive into the incident, mm-hmm. that's, that is a good lineup. That's a fantastic lineup. I don't know if anybody, I don't know if you know this, just kind of like a random fact. We used to hang with the girl whose uncle is the, is the guitarist for Earth, Wind & Fire. Uh, okay. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, man. She carry, Whoever she is, I don't you, you <laughs> tell me later, but she carry, yeah. She doesn't carry herself like she comes from that lineage. Of, yeah. I never hung around somebody that bragged about I never hung around somebody that bragged about it. I don't remember somebody telling me that. Yeah, it's funny. But yeah, man, small world. It's always small world. But that lineup, is, that's a lineup. That's, that's an a incredible good, that's lineup. That's a great lineup, yeah. man. And I also misspoke when I first was describing. So Astro World came out in 2018, and that year was the first Astro World. 2021 was the third annual okay, Astro World Festival. Okay. I said it was okay. the first one in 2021. The, this is 2021 was the third annual Astro World Festival. Okay, and that was the lineup: Lil Baby, Young uh, Young Thug, SZA, Free Thugger, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire, Master P, and 21 Savage. So, um, so it's early in the day. It's 4 p.m. Fran, and 54 people have already been treated for like. I don't know if you remember this day on Twitter, but there was so much footage of people early in the day. There were people jumping the fences because they, they were at capacity. Every ticket was sold. So there were people breaking down the fences. People yes. were just getting, it was crazy. Like it was, it was overly sold. They oversold it and people wanted to go. They was at capacity. They, 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 they undersold it. Oh, okay. All well, right. no, I mean, it was 50,000 people. It was, it was too That's many people, but they, but they could have sold 80,000 tickets basically. But they were at, at capacity, but they, they still, people were still trying to but get But people in. broke in. So, th- so people Man. who had tickets, it was 50,000 people, but it probably was like 65,000 people because people jumped the barriers and were getting in without tickets. And they Damn, didn't have you want to go that bad? They didn't have enough security to stop people from running into the event. Go next year, man. So really think about how many people got in that weren't ticketed. And we're just saying, we sold 50,000 tickets. That doesn't mean 50,000 people were there. Yeah. And 50,000 people... Is a lot of people. That's a lot of people, man. In one in one area? space. Yes, man. And I'm gonna get in. Keep that in mind. Yes, in one area. Now, keep in mind, festivals usually have multiple stages, so it might be seventeen thousand people over here, and then thirty thousand people over here, something like that. It usually, like it might break it up. And to add fuel to an already dangerous condition, there were no other performances happening at the time that Travis Scott was set to perform, meaning all fifty thousand attendees or more because that's 50,000 ticketed. Mm-hmm. All 50,000 attendees had the opportunity in the time waiting for him to go on stage to pack themselves in front of the main stage for the main event, which was the only performance that was happening at that time. Nothing else so, was going on. Nothing else. There was no scissor. There was no young, th- no earth, wind, and fire. Everybody, when Travis Scott performs at his, at his festival, nobody else performs. I didn't know that. So all 50,000 people were packed in front of that stage. The whole, the whole festival was at one stage. I want to know what the fascination is of being of wanting to be. Now I'm not blaming anybody. I want to say that mm-hmm. first. Go for it. But w- 
being trying to be in front like front row. Like, what is the Bro, everybody wants to get the TikTok, the the Instagram video. He's not. I wanna, he's not asking you to come up. I don't understand. Like, what? But is no. This? But that's the thing. You're wrong. Because sometimes he does. Okay. That's Travis Scott. Okay. If you see what Travis, if you if you're able to jump the barrier, Travis Scott will be like, "Don't touch him." Like to the security, he'll be like, "Don't touch him." He'll let you come up on the stage. He'll sing with you, and then he'll let you jump off the stage into the crowd. He's crazy. <laughs> he's crazy. And this is the but but that's his thing. Yeah. And this is the thing. I, I'm gonna. I, I'm. This is no disrespect to Beyonce. I'm giving her a compliment, but I don't want to put Beyonce in the same... I don't want to talk about Travis Scott and Beyonce. I want to make sure I preface it. I'm not saying Travis Scott is on the same level as Beyonce. But some people would say Travis Scott's ability to get people to go crazy the way that he does is a power, right? Like, his crowd control is crazy. I think music has a lot to do with that. For sure. His, his music is very elevated. But it's also, like, if you watch Travis Scott footage, he, he does a lot of, like, talking to the crowd and encouraging them. They listen to him. He's, he's almost like a like a, the Pied Piper. But he only knows how to do this, which is turn, turn him turn up. Turn up, yeah. Beyonce, I've seen footage. If you go on TikTok right now, you put in uh, Beyonce silent. She's doing her show, and there's a moment in one of her songs where it's like, da 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 da, everybody mute up, and you hear 40,000 people shut the fuck up for, for five seconds. That's power. Getting them, you gotta be able to get them to go down too. Mm-hmm. When you go, hey, everybody be quiet for a second, and everybody shuts the fuck up. Yeah. And I don't think Travis Scott is a, I don't think he, I don't, maybe he is, but that's not what he does. His, his claim to fame is like, I can get everybody to go crazy and start breaking shit and flipping up. That's, but then can you bring it back down? And guess what? I'm going to get into it. But at Astroworld, he couldn't. And he wasn't trying to. And in his, in his defense, I'm gonna, I have the whole timeline of Astroworld, the events that happened that day. But I don't know if he knew how bad shit was. So I don't think he had knowledge to know to try to calm things down i think he knew something was going on but probably like as normal as any concert like oh people are passing out well okay well hey y'all open up the crowd let those people because i've been at festivals and what happens is somebody might fall out and then they open the crowd up and they push them to the front so they can put them over the barricades and then take them out through the back people pass out at concerts all the time so i'm sure travis scott is no no um stranger to that i don't think he knew that it was a mass casualty event which is what it got categorized as while it was happening I don't think he knew that and was still like, and I get the goosebumps every time. Yeah. Jump on the fucking trucks. Like, I don't think he would have been doing that <laughs> if he knew people were dying. Yeah. I got to shoot him some bail on that. And also I have examples when I go through the timeline of how I, why I don't think he knew what, exactly what was going on. Mm. I think he just thought like, oh, some people got dehydrated. Some people hurt themselves. Like, let's keep the show going. I got Drake coming out in a little bit. Like, it's going to be a fun time. I don't want to ruin the fun for everybody we can still keep going and let the ambulances and everything take care of the stuff that that's their responsibility. My responsibility is to rock the crowd. I can't be thinking about ambulances and all this shit. I, you know, I think that's, that was his, I don't want to get into his mind. I don't want to sit here and defend him and everything um, nonstop. But I'm just saying like, it's a lot of factors that go into who organizes the festival. It's not all on one person. I just want to say that before I keep going. So keep in mind, 50,000 people, friend, all in, in, in the crowd to see one person. So the crowd began to compress towards the front of the stage as it got closer to when Travis Scott was supposed to come on stage. So, you know, I don't, you've been to, you've been to like concerts though, right? No. I oh, okay. To- well, every, at a concert, you might, let's say at a concert, you might be a hundred yards from a stage. Okay. And when the artist comes on the stage. Actually, I haven't been to a concert, but go ahead. Okay. Well, then you might know this feeling. When the, when that swelling of the energy, when the lights go out and everything, you might go from 100 yards from the stage to 80 because everybody, they all just like tighten up. Everybody rushes the stage a little bit and tries to take up every little bit amount of space that they can to get as close as they possibly can. 50,000 people did that. Mm. So if you're at that front barricade, like the example I gave earlier when I was talking about Snoop Dogg or whatever I was talking about, if you're in that front row up against that barrier, 50,000 people have now took one step forward. It's like um, 300. You know how 300 when they all put the shields together and then they yeah. like, they, they step in on you with it yeah. and like they close you off. Mm-hmm. That's what happened. 50,000 people all did, w- took one step and put their weight up against your back. Yeah. And now you're stuck. Yeah. I can't, uh, I can't, I don't, I don't know the experience of that situation. It's claustrophobia at a, at a severe level. Yeah. I, the concert that I've been to was at like a, f- I guess you call it a festival, but it wasn't, it wasn't to the magnitude of goddamn, wasn't nowhere. I mean, not even in the ballpark of, <laughs> What was 50, happening? People. Yeah, fifty thousand. Yeah. <laughs> the concert I saw was Tina Marie, and that was in in Baltimore City, where it was. Just oh, like okay, a, that's was, that sounds like a nice time. Uh, uh, oh, it was. <laughs> I had a phenomenal. It was a great time. I you can. I had space. It wasn't. 
<laughs> now this is Tina Marie p- way past yeah, her prime, so it's like, for sure. and it's a whole, whole bunch of old heads, so it's not a lot of people. But I know her music, right? I grew up on her music, and I had a great time just having space vibing around out. me, vibing mm-hmm. out, man. I don't know if I, I don't. You don't want to be packed in like a sardine. No, man. Like I just to hear his song. You can't even I, jump to the song. Do I love Travis Scott? Yes, but I mean, like I don't. I just I'm not. About not to, to be die. uncomfortable. I'm or not scared. About, it's not happening. Think about how many people, because like, think about how many people left that night alive. A lot of people did. Most people, yeah. most people left. Some people died. Most people left alive. But think about how many people of those fifty thousand people had a moment where they were legitimately scared for their lives because they couldn't yeah. breathe. So but, I've never been. I've been to some festivals. I've never been so packed in that I'm like, I can't move or breathe. This is, so I'm. But some of these these festivals have like they have jumbo screens, right? Like jumbotron. Yeah. Like so, you don't need to be that close. You can you can see it better from the screen. But why go? But, Exactly. I want to get as close as possible. <laughs> I'm not into it. That's, I don't want. If I would, I would love to be like I said, front row. If I can, if I'm comfortable, yeah. I can see. Fine. But if I'm going to be that far away, looking at the jump, I'm not going. It's no point. Like what? You can't even really feel the energy. You can't. No. But I, but friend, that's what. I'm, here's the thing. Let me. I'm going to push back about against what I just said to okay. you because as a person who went to a festival. Okay. That's not true. I was nowhere near ASAP Rocky. I couldn't even see him except on the big screen. When it's 20, 30,000 people all jumping around to that. Now I could move. That's the by thing. Cho- okay. By choice though. Yes. If you were, if you really wanted to, you could, you can, you could fight your way to the front if you really wanted to. No, I wasn't going to do that. By choice. You that. I'm not, I, I'm not doing I, that. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, no, <laughs> I, I'm not. I, I was at the back for sure. Yeah. Just, I get, I like, I legit get a shoot in the breath. Just think about it. Just be, but suffocating, in a situation like that where it's like, I can't I can't yell. It's too loud. And I can't get nobody. That's terrifying, man. Yeah. That is. Mm. And people can't differentiate, you know, your screams. If you're if it's fun screams, if you're scared screams like people. I'm, I'm sure people could tell a blood curdling scream. But at the same time, it's 50,000 people. It doesn't matter if everybody goes, oh, this person's actually hurt. How many people care? Because Goosebumps is on. Or antidote is on. You know what I mean? How many people really give a shit? Like, that, it really shows you how many, like, really how self-centered people are. It's like, they're like, somebody just passed out. It's like, well, shut up. Yeah. You know? There were people jumping. Like, there were ambulances driving into the crowd to pick people up. And kids were jumping on the ambulance and turning up on the ambulance. But that's the energy that Travis Scott, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying about Beyonce when she goes, everybody, mute up. Yeah. Travis Scott goes, Break everything, to, man! Rage, and so they're like, "Is that an ambulance, man? I'm gonna jump on this." Travis Scott would be proud of me right now. Yeah, I'm gonna jump on the ambulance and turn up on the ambulance. Yeah, I, that's what he tells you he wants you to do. Yeah, so I, it is he. Well, well I will get it to the end. I'll, I'll yeah, we'll get into end. it. Save that, save that, save that, because I want to. I want to get into that as well. Yeah. Um. So at around 9 p.m., just minutes into Travis Scott's performance, fans near the stage could be seen struggling to stay on their feet. So mm-hmm. people were like passing out. Just 10 minutes into the performance. Less than 10 minutes into the show, groups of concert goers throughout the crowd began to show distress. So people are already like, it's too crowded. I can't breathe. Like, but again, it's 50,000 people. He can't hear individual people. I'm yeah. not, but this is, if you are paying attention, you see that people are uncomfortable. It's, it's packed. Like you can read the tea leaves a little bit. At around 9.25 p.m., Scott stopped the show for the first time to draw attention to someone in the crowd who needed help, saying, somebody passed out right there. Open the crowd up, open the crowd up, let's get them out of there. Like, he, he, he did that a couple of times. I have a couple more instances where he did that. So it's not like he just kept performing, didn't give a fuck. He did stop the show and pointed out that somebody needed some help. He then continued his performance, but stopped two more times in response to the chaos in the crowd, including once when the ambulance drove through the crowd, and I told you there were people jumping on it. Okay. So... <clears throat> Realistically, I think a lot of people will play like halftime uh, quarterback or post game quarterback and say he should have just stopped the show. Yeah, I was. But I was if you stop the show, stop. fifty thousand people are not going to go. Oh, the show's over. Let me turn around and peacefully walk out and leave. They're going to destroy the venue. rage. Yeah. Yes, N- and now rage mad because Travis Scott left early. What the fuck? Like now it gets bad. I was wondering, did he stop this? Did he? Did he pause the show so the ambulance come through? That's what I was wondering. If he kept on going, was no, he was still performing while the ambulance was out there getting okay. people. Okay, okay, all right. You know, but he did stop the show. I'm saying there were instances where he did stop the songs and like say, "Hey, over there, let's get them, whatever." Right. Yeah. But I mean, if they jumping on the ambulance, like, stop the show. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen, stop the show. But again, I feel like this what this 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 concert, this festival went bad before it ever started. Yeah. It was poorly planned. There was too many tickets sold or there was not enough staff because again, I'm not offering I'm just playing devil's advocate. I don't have any I'm not Travis Scott's manager or anything like that. But let's just say realistically, I cuz I think this would have happened. You got 50,000 people ticketed. Mm-hmm. Young kids, excited, already turned up, excited, jumping on shit, going crazy. If you cut that show early, I think there's just as much damage, if not more, than if you finish the show and, like, people leave semi-peacefully having had this awful experience of people dying. But, like, you pe- you crammed all these people in, and I think you just kind of had to ride it out. Because if you end that show... All hell breaks loose. All hell, I think. And I could be wrong. I'd love to hear people's thoughts, obviously. You know, everybody's going to have different differentiating opinions. But I feel like if you stop that show, if, if Travis Scott goes, and it depends on how you deliver it, and Travis Scott is not, he's an artist. He's not here to be eloquent and shit like that. If he goes, hey, y'all, the Houston police said we got to stop the show. What? Boo, fuck the police. So we got to go, y'all. Have a good night. Get home safe. I know we had an hour left, but we got to end it early. If he says anything other than, hey, y'all, I don't think it's safe. Even if he says this perfectly. Hey guys, listen, I care about y'all and I love y'all and I don't want anybody else to get hurt. So I'm choosing to end the show early. They're still going to be mad. Yeah. Well, maybe. That and that's that, the perfect thing to say. Maybe the people that didn't pay, maybe it won't be mad. Yeah. They're like, I, oh, I broke, I broke. <laughs> I got it free. I don't even know who Travis Stotch is. Stotch. They're like, I just saw a, a car, a, a Ferris wheel and I just wanted <laughs> to be with the shits. As people started fainting from the force and the pressure of the crowd, they would also then be consumed by the crowd. So, once you, you know, get suffocated and pass out, mm-hmm. the crowd then just steps over you to get closer to the stage. Man. So they just take your spot. And now you're on the ground and there's people just like standing on like, you. Like you're like a can of soda. Like you're like, man, something's under my feet at this concert. It's bodies. Wow. So people wow. got trampled to death at the concert because they fell out. And now 50,000 people are like, oh, we can all take another step forward. You let Travis got that bad. Some people do. He's a big deal, man. He had a, he had a meal at McDonald's. A, a, a Travis Scott me or whatever. <laughs> what a Big Mac? They just changed the name. I don't yeah, know. a La Flame, a La Flame Grill. Uh, Fuck out of here, man. <laughs> a La Flame Grill. Uh, if the box don't open, like playing a song, I don't. I don't. What's the, what's the point of this? I don't know, bro. Listen, fans are fans. You know, fans be fanning. So like, so now, yeah. So people are passing out and now getting trampled to death. People stepping on their bodies. By nine forty, Houston police officers and firefighters responded to reports of a mass casualty event at the festival where people were being crushed against the stage and wow. many had already collapsed according to the police activity log. So by, so the fest, the, the, his set started at nine o'clock by nine 40, there were calls coming into the Houston police stations and the emergency response saying we have a mass casualty event, which I think is like more than five people have died at one place. And he's still on the stage performing. That's crazy. So while he's performing, there's people, there's phone calls going out. Like we have people die, They're dead. And he's still like, He's still playing. He's still the Sun's down, freezing cold. Him and Drake. Drake. Drake came out. My dog will probably do it for. Oh my God, we need help. And he's just like, Yeah, I know. We need. We all need help. He's just turned up, man. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane, bro. I, but like, I don't like. I don't know what he was supposed to do. I, it, it, it's a hard one. Let me go ahead and continue. Okay, I, I I did want to look up the the way the setup the 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 setup is. So you okay. had the crowd. The crowd. The crowd area, mm-hmm. but you have the camera tower in the back. So you have, right. the, have the camera tower in the back, the crowd area. You have the crowd barrier, and then there, and then the stage is like a T shaped. So you have okay. So you can run down the so middle you can of the come crowd. down the middle a little bit, and people will be on the side. And people of the will be on the side. Yeah. So you have right. where the T is. You had a you have a crowd section there. Uh huh. The crowd barrier, and then there's another section behind that. So it's like Got a it. two. Man, that's a. It's a ton of people, bro. That's and there a were ton people, of people trying to shout to the camera people to stop the show. They don't have any. Again, the wow. cameraman is just there to point the camera around. He he can't call Travis Scott. Wow. But it's like they just they're like trying to get some. Who's in? There's kids out there, 19, 18 year old kids being like, "There's a girl dead right here. Can you tell somebody to stop the show?" But th- keep in mind, he's number forty eight thousand. He's so far from Travis Scott. They, Travis Scott's in his own words, like, man, I'm killing this shit, man. These people are going crazy. People fainting. I'm like Michael Jackson. But really, it's it's a mass casualty event. You just, and I'm sure in his mind, he thought he was just putting on a hell of a show. He was raging. In his mind, 
I'm speaking for him. Let me not do that because I don't want to shoot Travis Scott bail. I think there are some things that got done wrong, and I have some thoughts, and we'll get to it, but let me just finish out. So at around 942, Scott stopped the show for a third time to draw attention to someone in the crowd who needed help. So he did it three times. By 1012, Scott finished the show and left the stage. Police officials later told the Houston Chronicle that the promoter, Live Nation, who's also, see, I told you, they're involved in everything. They're even involved, they were involved in Astro World too. So the promoter, Live Nation, agreed to cut the show short. But Scott continued his set anyway. So, but then you got to, so, so, but then again, the question goes, so did the police tell Live Nation that they wanted to stop the show and then they didn't tell Travis Scott? Or did the police tell Live Nation, Live Nation goes, hey, Travis, it's getting crazy out there. We need to stop the show. And he goes, I'm not stopping the show. I'm Travis Scott. I don't think we'll ever know all those details. Yeah. But somehow the communication got to one end that they were going to stop the show and then the show didn't stop. So there was communication that, hey, this is bad. This is out of control. We need the show to stop. And then it didn't stop. Those are the facts. How if Travis Scott, if because think about it, Travis Scott is not some no name dude. You do, you got to talk to twenty people before you talk to Travis Scott, and he's on stage. So how do you get the message to Travis Scott on the stage to stop the show during the show? Because it's just I don't know. I, I'm interested in like your thoughts of everything once once I wrap things up uh, yeah. as far as this specific thing. Yeah. But so uh, he he got off the stage. Uh, he left right after the show. And Scott's attorney later told ABC News that Scott did not know what was happening in the crowd during the concert. So all he knew was like some people were passing out and that happens at concert, according to him. In total, some 300 people were were treated by medical personnel on site while another 25 were transported to the hospital. The remainder of the festival was canceled because there was a second day. It was canceled. Scott oh, released shit. a statement. Yeah, yeah, second day did not happen. And he did. And he was supposed to do another festival, like as a headliner. He canceled his spot, and they replaced him with like Post Malone. I mean, he, and I, he yeah. had to. He had a choice. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just down? a bad publicity. Yeah. He's like, he can't show up at a festival, and somebody get hurt at that festival. Like, you're you're killing people. You're you're, you're a killer. Um, he released a statement on Instagram saying how he was absolutely devastated about what took place the night before. He offered full refunds to anyone who attended the festival and canceled all remaining tour dates. In the days following the festival night. The casualty total of eight was added to when 22-year-old Bahardi Shahani died from injuries sustained at the festival, while a nine-year-old boy who attended the festival with his father lied in critical condition. Mm. Less than a week later, the nine-year-old boy had succumbed to his injuries. So that brought the tally, the tally up to 10. 10 people died at Astroworld. Travis Scott made headlines this year. After a concert he planned in Egypt in celebration of his new album, Utopia, which is also, I like it a lot. It's fantastic, I think. Was canceled after local officials in Egypt couldn't come to an agreement with Scott's tour management over some aspects of the show. There were some rumors about they thought he was wor devil, worship, devil worshiping. or so. they, they just thought like his imagery was too much um, or something to that effect. And so they canceled the Egypt show. Okay, But that, that brought about uh, canceling a Travis Scott show brings, brings people back to like, Oh, did Egypt cancel the show because they heard about what happened at Astro World? So it started the Astro World dialogue again. Um, and so uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on like what what do you think about the Travis Scott situation? Um, I do. He deserves some blame because his name is written all over it. Of course. So you he that's something you really can't escape by him being. Yeah, you gotta. His, yes, you're the his, face. His, you're the face. It's your festival. Your name is all over the place. Um, but I don't think you can blame him for. See, you know, you knew more about the festival. I didn't know he was like a, well, I did know a little bit, but I didn't know he was like, you know, kind of like promoting. Oh, he's like a turn up guy. No like fucking, jump off this. Is he like, is it like, is it like, uh, what do you call it? A mosh pit type? Is it? Is yes. That, that's what, yes. That's yes. what he's it is. Like, open the, open the crowd up. Everybody jump, run into oh, each shit. other. Yeah. Yeah. That's his thing. That's chaos. Yeah. I just, he does deserve some blame, but I, I don't think he should be fully blamed for the casualties because like you can't, by, by you singing and you have a crowd of. 50,000 50, 50, people. people and people. And you know eight are dead? Like you can't. You like, can, it's you, not. It's really nothing you can do. Music is loud. Music behind you. People are jump. You. How can you differentiate somebody partying, throwing their hands, or like somebody's waiting for help? Like I yeah. think that's that's extremely complicated to try to do that in the moment while you're performing and kind of keeping your composure and still putting on the show. And then you as Travis Scott probably also know your fans. You might be in your mind like, man, listen, I can't end this show. If I end this show... It's gonna, they're going to tear this shit up. 
I think that and maybe he didn't. Th- I might even yeah. give him a credit and say he thought about yeah, that. I don't think he thought about that. I don't think he thought about anything. Yeah. I thought he was just like, I'm not canceling the show. I'm, these are my fans. I'm that because he really loves his fans. I think he was like, and, I'm giving and, my and, people what they want, and because it's his show, it's his show yes. to be like, I'm not no. Like this, this is, is my. my shit. They came here to see me. Exactly. They paid to see me. You know, it's an arrogance to it. Yeah. So, uh his his team, I think, did mm-hmm. a poor poor job at managing. And the kind of festival was poorly laid out. Preparing for this, I, you have to be underprepared. They were underprepared. Underprepared. But when was the last time this happened before the Astro World? You know what I mean? Like usually you can have usually you have a template where you go like, "What this happened last week? We can't, we can't, we gotta avoid that." So that unfortunately, was unfortunately he 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 was he's the template. That's so, sad. It's unfortunate, but somebody had to be. There had to be a shift. There had to be a people, a reset of people going like these festivals are getting big. People are not giving a shit. And Travis Scott was a sacrificial land. I mean, not, not sacrificial. It was a poorly planned festival. Yeah. But after that festival, but it's the reality. Eilish, you know. All these people were every after, every festival and concert after that. Everybody's like, everybody okay? Need water? Yep. Yep. Every artist after that show yeah. is talking to their audience, asking if people need help. Anybody? Everybody okay out there? Anybody need help? It 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 reminded people that these are people out there. Exactly. Exactly. And it's not just a show and money and yeah. I'm doing a thing like and whether it's for selfish reasons, like I don't want to be a bad headline or it reminded people to go. You got to care about your fans, yeah. man. You got to make sure they're safe. Like this, sometimes these can be unsafe conditions. Yeah. Either way, Travis Scott was the last time that this happened. Exactly. And it's like, how do you And somebody had to be you can't prepare. And this and that happens just in general, just in any part of life where something goes. That was like, OK, something happened. The incident happened before this. We got to avoid this happening again. And he was that. Mm-hmm. Like you said, he was the template. He was the example, and that's unfortunate. But I mean, you can't you can't prepare for what happened. No, you can't prepare for what happened. Now, do you do you subscribe to the idea that he should like? Because there's some people that believe this. He should like not be allowed to tour. Like he should be banned from going out and making a living anymore. I don't I don't think that t- now taking a taking a hiatus from maybe one which or two he years, did. which he did, which he did. But like, that's his. This is his career. I mean, this is what he. This is what he does. Like he got to make, right. you got to make money. You got to make a living. I at just, some point, you got. At some point, you got to go. Like he didn't go out there and like stab eight people. Just, like yes. we can't just say like it's fully his fault that eight people died. It was a tragedy. Yeah, but what do you? Hopefully, he learns from it in the justice ex- concert. Exactly. Okay, yeah. you dropped the number of of, of attendance. You like, you know, you yes. put resource water. And you now it's like if I he think, continues to be irresponsible, that's a whole different and, situation. Then then he should not be allowed to do yes. it anymore. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think he should take full blame of of what happened. It's unfortunate, yes. And I don't I don't know what happened. What was he charged? What? No, he they they, they didn't they, they didn't find him criminally responsible for the death. Okay, all right. Because you got to go like you but think I'm, Travis I'm Scott sure goes. He went out, I'm sure he helped the families. I, I would. Yeah, he paid for funerals. Okay. He did, okay. but like you know, at paying for somebody's funeral is like that's not going to make me not be mad at you for the rest of my life. But I mean, he has to do, you have to do something. He did all the, I think he did all yeah. the things of that donations yeah. and all that stuff. So, but it's one of those kind of things where it's like, um, if you're a Travis Scott, nobody's coming to Travis Scott to be like, Hey, Travis, do you think it should be 50,000 or 40,000 logistically? Like he like, man, listen, I want to do a festival and I want my head to be the mouth that people go in through the door. After that, yeah. make it happen. Yeah. Like I, that's it. I'm gonna and probably the lineup. He's yeah. probably like, I know SZA, I know Lil Baby, and you know, so I want to do the lineup. But the logistics of like, do you think it should be a hundred security guards or 150? It's yeah. like they're not asking Travis Scott yeah. that. It's, that's what I'm saying. His team at whatever. It was a poorly, was managed, poorly managed festival. Managed. Yeah, and I don't think that is fully on him. But he's the face, and so in that regard, I feel like. Even though I don't expect you to, everybody's going to go, well, why Why wouldn't you as the person? It's called Travis Scott's Astro World. Why wouldn't you make sure they have enough security? You should be and have your hands in every aspect of this if you want to be able to. When it goes good, they give you all the credit. Yeah, yeah. They don't give the the the, the festival planner credit when it's the best Astro World. They go, Travis Scott put on another great festival, and it was amazing. So when it goes bad, you got to get the blame too. So um, just to close things up about the future of music festivals. So uh, Fran, and, we, and we've, again, we've discussed this both in part one and part two about how, what music festivals kind of are today. But at this point, mainstream music festival culture is nothing more than 
a watered down, overly commercialized cash grab that offers no original or unique experiences. And it's basically just kids doing hard drugs and fooling themselves into thinking that they're having a unique experience yeah. through the photos that they take for social media. Yep. Like that is what a music festival is. It's like, look at me. I saw Dua Lipa. Did you have fun seeing Dua Lipa? Though is the question. It, and most people did it you get matter. backstage? Act, like, what are you? I don't care. Did you yeah. get backstage access? Were you hanging out? Did you take a personal picture? I don't. You been in a crowd of twenty thousand people taking a picture? Like, you know, your your back is facing them, and you got your. Mm-hmm. I got my I cute bikini on. I got my face painted, and I'm at the festival, and and we saw uh, <laughs> Noah Cyrus. Yeah, you know, it's like so, but it's not so. That person goes viral yeah, on TikTok. That true. person goes gets thousands of likes on Instagram. Like these people, people care. Because guess what? The ticket costs seven hundred dollars. So there's somebody in Sheboygan who's never going to go to Coachella. I mean, I get it though. Who, you pay seven. So they live vicariously through you. Yeah, you pay seven dollars for a ticket. Somebody about to see these pictures. Oh, you're gonna see this. You're gonna see this. Uh, <laughs> I guess this that. electric forest that they got. You got. You're gonna see me enjoying this. It's gonna be a. Fa- I'm putting on the facade and everything. I, I may hate it. I'm gonna lay in these hammocks. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to see me laying in these hammocks. And I'm going to put hashtag uh, Lollapalooza. Yeah, blessed. I'll put hashtag, <laughs> <laughs> blessed. <laughs> hashtag I'm blessed. Hashtag blessed. I'm holding up the VSOP <laughs> at the Made in America Festival. And you're going to appreciate that. I'm like, and I, I just, uh, Jay-Z's uh, Black Suburban just drove through the back part. I saw it. Yeah. I saw a hove in the truck. <laughs> you know, like that's the type of stuff that's ex- that's going on today. People are paying hundreds of dollars for moment for wow. a grid spot on their instagram bro wow and they didn't even have a real good time so what these is, festivals are lame these days they're all the same like do you have the, the unique average, experiences yeah the average price they, for a, a, a concert is that how much is a beyonce ticket right now tickets range from two two hundred fifty seven $257 to almost $9200 uh-huh same with taylor swift <laughs> same with drake Fucking yes great that is man like I said, um, th- th- this culture is so watered down, whether it's Rolling Loud, Coachella, Firefly, Lollapalooza, the festival space is simply a watered down version of a movement born out of such spirit, mm. not only for public safety, but for the sake of art, music and culture. We must dismantle the hold that corporations have on festivals so the organic festivals can flourish and live entertainment can find its soul again. I wholeheartedly believe this. I think these festivals are sucking the life out of music, which has already had the life sucked out of it so much. These artists make no money on their music anymore. And now they have to go out and dance like monkeys for you guys for, for, for pennies on the dollar, really. I mean, that's the best hope they have in feeding their family is to do a live performance at a festival. Like, that's the best way people can see feeding their family these days. And you're not even really getting an artist experience. When you talk about the, uh, the, the Newport jazz festival, you talk about Woodstock. I know you, like you said, Woodstock was a failure really kind of, but the love of music and the passion for entertainment is what made that place. What was what made that experience legendary. Nobody walked away from that and tell stories of a bad time. Everybody had fun. Cause why it was an organic experience and people just rolled with the punches cause they were having fun. Now is nothing exciting happening at these festivals. They're just boring bullshit. That's crazy, man. And just lies. And overcharging you for like a, a alligator po' boy. It's insane. Or like a Slurpee. They're like, here's a Slurpee. It's $20. So, yeah, I mean, that's all I got on festivals, man. You got any uh, final thoughts? No, nah, man. I just, I think that um, an average ticket for, for a music festival is between $200 to $600. I just looked that up. Yep. And they got VIP, and I mean, they, they can go up. Yeah, they can be. Yeah, I mean. yeah. They say you can spend almost up to like up to like two thousand dollars based on whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, especially if it's like yeah. a weekend long thing. Yeah, it can go up. But I would just like to see more like smaller festivals with other artists. Ca- I, the care, yeah. the, uh, maybe like because you, the top tier artists at those festivals is going to run for a lot of money. So the tickets are. It's just. They're going to be high. They're to, going to, be to high. break even. They're going to be, yeah, they're going to, to be yeah. high. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think if if they're now, I do think it's a good idea for these festivals to have multiple stages, just depending on whatever the lineup yes. is. If you have any, spread it out. Like if you have any local artists come in, or if you have like an uh, your top artists have their label come under them, and like for example, J Cole and them come on. They if they, you know, schedule the times properly, where it's like J Cole comes on, but you have J something else going on over here, the other way. Yeah, kind of like spread out the crowd a little bit. I think that's mm-hmm. a good idea. I think these festivals should do that more often, where it's multiple stages, 
where everybody's not packed into. And a know, lot of them do. I think Astro they World just didn't do that. Yeah, I think they should though. But like I said, if it's based you know on Travis Scott's situation, you can't you can't plan for that. And that's and that's unfortunate. But I think people should stop going to those festivals. I don't think it's mm-hmm. going to happen because the machines they have behind these festivals for marketing and they make budget, you want to go. It's like you. It's like if you're 21 years old, you're, they make you feel like if you're not here, you're you're losing. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that's going to happen. But I, I feel like at some point it will, but not right now. Not right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fran, uh, what are you thankful for? Um, I'm thankful. Hey, man. I'm in a. Uh, I'm going through a new hobby phase right now, so I'm thankful to be trying something. To, I'm I'm learning something new. I'm, my new hobby is golf, so I'm learning something. I'm happy to be able to physically try something. Try new. something new, because mm-hmm. my body just can't keep up with basketball anymore. We had this conversation already. I'm leaning. I'm, I'm leaning. I'm leaning towards golf, where it's like there is some awkward movement that I have to get used to. And but it's lower impact. It's lower basketball. impact, and just learn something new is I think it's cool. So I'm thankful just to be kind of like indulging in something new where it's like I'm sure. watching YouTube videos I'm getting on my wife's nerves I'm like in here swinging my <laughs> arms and shit like that and I think it's I'm thankful just to be trying something new you know yeah. I always always wanted to do it and I finally get a chance to like to finally I'm, I'm I'm digging down deep into it now so for sure yeah we gotta get out on the green yeah, man. I don't really know how to do that where you go I think I, the- I think you'll like it because basketball was an escape for me and it still is and I can I just but it's going to do it just like by myself, yeah, it's not the same for golf because like now I'm like I'm out here practicing. You do both practice, right. but like I can go golf by yourself. By my, I can go shoot some, you know, hit some holes by myself. Right. Playing basketball, my I, I would have to go with. Pe- it gets old. I have to go yeah, find gets- people, new people. It's just I'm not into that anymore. I don't have the yeah. time to do that. anymore. I just don't. It's want too to. much of a social burden. Exactly. In the 30s, like to get 10 people to do something. Like that. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. I don't even like Tim B. Yeah, so that's what I'm thinking for. How about yourself? I'm thankful for family, man. Like I said last episode, I, I, I buried my grandfather this weekend. And hey, rest it, in peace. It was, uh, that's Big Al, right? Big, rest in peace, Big Al. Big Al, Al yeah, rest, rest in peace, Big Al. I was a, man, the whole the whole East Baltimore came out for my yeah, grandfather. Man. It, was like a, it was like 150 people. Wow. It was insane. And afterwards, we went to like a VFW and had his repass. Okay. And there was a DJ there and they played music. And I saw my grandmother dance to the percolator, bro. Wow. Like she just I, to see like the juxtaposition of my grandmother crying as they closed my grandfather's casket to like her dancing and having a good time. It just was like this full circle, like life, man. Yeah. Life is yeah. Life is complicated, and it's all these different ranges of emotions. And I was just happy to like have that time with my family and see like the resilience. Yeah, like it was the lowest low, and then we had some food and danced and celebrated yeah. and there was cardboard cutouts yeah and some lady showed up in a fuck the hater shirt and i was like okay that's um you know people people dress every funeral you know you dress how you want to i, I that was a person that personally me personally i probably wouldn't have wore the fuck the hater shirt to a funeral. Like why but, you but that's the who's the ha- who's the hater yeah. <laughs> right but that's the that's the bittersweet moment of this that's the celebration of life where it's like you yeah we cry and then after that it's like you because you're supposed to the think about funerals is I don't want to get too deep in this but you know I know funerals are sad but it's supposed to be on a obituary most of the time that's a celebration of life and that's what it's yes. that's what it's supposed to be it's really yes. not supposed to be this sad yeah sad, you cry yeah. obviously because we're humans and we have emotions and all I get all that but it's like you're supposed to celebrate you're supposed to remember the good times that you had with this person that's no longer here that we know, yes. you know we won't see again so it's like that the free pass is where you, it's really where this where you kind of get together, you talk about memories and you, yes. you see old family and stuff like that. So like, that's, so that's big. There was, there was, there was a little bit of, obviously everybody, the funeral was sad, yeah. but you know, if somebody comes up and tells a word, tells a story, we laugh a little bit, yeah. we cry a little bit. And the repast was exactly that. It was such a celebration. I had, uh, reconnected with family members that I hadn't seen in a long time. It was all this, all this beauty yeah. in within this sad moment, you know, it brings people together. And a lot of times you hope that, it's not just because of this sad moment. So I'm appreciative and I'm thankful for family. And I hope that this was like a good reset for a lot of my family to go, hey, man, we only get one shot at this. Like, let's enjoy each other. Let's let's come together. Let's see each other more often. And I, I got that spirit from that. And I hope to 
keep that going because yeah. you know you only get you only get one family like yeah good or bad whatever like it's your family and you should celebrate them because one day they're not going to be here. yeah because I I, so, I was going to try to make it but I had to work you know just kind of like to be no it was a, it was a you know it was a, it was a, it was a weird time yeah yeah a, yeah and weird. I just um but I didn't get I, I didn't get a chance to meet big guy I I did meet you know Al Williams the second I have met him before for sure have met him yeah, before yeah, yeah. I mean that was years ago but. But right. um, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, pop, pop is doing, he's, he's my, you know, my, my grandfather is in a much better place. Yeah. My dad is recovering. Yeah. And, w- and now that it's behind us a bit, we can all now continue our journey of healing. Yeah, yeah, for as, sure. You know, so, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just thankful for that, man. But uh, with all that being said, uh, this has been another episode of Affirmative Murder. I've been Alvin Williams, joined as always by my partner and true crime friend, Sal Evans. We'll see you guys next week. Deuces. Deuces.